also requesting if we can have uh, other seminars also from you, Maharaj, maybe advanced level of Bhagavad Gita seminar and uh, seminar on important topics like from Bhagavatam. Yes. Yes, very nice. That's, that's really nice uh, of you, Maharaj. Thank you. So we will inform all the participants uh, because we do have your contact numbers and emails uh, through the registration. And for our future programs, which we will decide on uh, whether it's going to be advanced level Bhagavad Gita seminar or the Bhagavatam seminar on important topics, uh, we'll keep you informed and uh, we will also invite you to join those sessions. Achara Mataji, would you like to translate that? Yes, Manji. Hare Krishna Guru Dev, please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj, all glories to Sila Prabhupada. สาวกทุกคนนะคะเข้าสู่บทที่ตาวันที่ 18 and as Maharaj mentioned that this is uh, just we have about uh, the beginners levels also here. We can go deeper into the other seminars, right Maharaj? Yes. ก็อย่างที่เอ่อมหาราชบอกนะคะว่านี้เนี่ยเป็นแค่เริ่มๆที่จะเรียนรู้ในสถานในเชิงลึกของของในส่วนของพระพุทธคิตานี้เดี๋
but I'm not seeing the the zoom. You can see it okay? Yeah? Yes, 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 Garage. Okay. So we'll go ahead. So chapter 18, the conclusion, the perfection of renunciation. Actually, Lord Krishna has already completed the Bhagavad Gita, but this is a summary of what he has taught. So, jumping ahead up to text number 20 to 22, Lord Krishna describes three kinds of knowledge in the modes of nature. Right, knowledge in the modes. We see knowledge in goodness is to understand one undivided spiritual nature in all living entities, to see everybody as a spirit soul. A knowledge in the mode of passion is to make a distinction, to see different types of living entities, to see them different. So in the mode of goodness, we don't make distinction between one living entity and another. We see all forms of life as spiritual beings. But in the mode of passion, you make a distinction between different species of life. And knowledge in the mode of ignorance, one is attached to one kind of work. And they have no knowledge of the truth. Okay, so understand there's different kinds of knowledge, different levels of knowledge according to the modes of nature. Going ahead, text 37 to 39 describe happiness, which is also in different modes of nature. So, happiness in the mode of goodness, it describes that in the beginning it's just like poison, but in the, in the end it's like nectar, and it awakens one to self-realization. Then happiness in the mode of passion is, uh, it comes from contact of the senses with the sense objects and it's like nectar but quickly it becomes poison. Then happiness in the mode of ignorance, there's no self-realization and it's delusion from beginning, beginning to end. And their happiness comes from sleep, laziness and illusion. 
That's their happiness. So you can understand there's a bit such a big difference in how people view happiness. And we can understand this due to the modes of nature. We're going ahead quickly up to text number 61 and up to 663, describing, describing more confidential knowledge. Hmm. We have confidential knowledge, we have more confidential knowledge, and then there is most confidential knowledge. So confidential knowledge was described like in text number 54, 55, was described how one who understands himself to be the, the soul, to be Brahman, that is confidential knowledge. Yeah. Brahman is like the impersonal energy of Lord Krishna. And we are also Brahman, we are tiny sparks, tiny sparks of the Brahman. And, and Lord Krishna is the Supreme Brahman. But now, text 61 to 63 are going to give higher knowledge, more confidential knowledge, going to describe the super soul or the Paramatma. The Paramatma is also Brahman, but it's superior to the to the impersonal Brahman, superior to us. We are Brahman, we are we are Krishna's energy. But the Paramatma is also Brahman. The Paramatma is Krishna's own expansion. So there's a big difference between the impersonal Brahman and the Paramatma. The Brahman. Right? So Lord Krishna describes here, text 61 to 63, the Paramatma. The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjuna, and is directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated as on a machine made of the material energy. O sign of Bharat, surrender unto him utterly. By his grace you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode. Thus I have explained to you knowledge still more confidential, 
deliberate on this fully and then do what you wish to do. So in this way Lord Krishna describes the Paramat himself as the Paramatma. In the heart of everyone and directing them just like just like um, an operator direct controls the machine. The body is like a machine and the Paramatma is like the operator of the machine. Well, go ahead. Text number 64. <clears throat> So, because you are my very dear friend, I am speaking to you my supreme instruction, the most confidential knowledge of all. Hear this from me, for it is for your benefit. <laughs> So we heard about happiness, how happiness could be in the ignorance and in passion and in goodness. And now we're seeing, and then we heard also knowledge could be in ignorance and passion and goodness. So now Krishna is, we heard there's different levels of spiritual knowledge, confidential knowledge, more confidential and most confidential. So knowledge of the confidential knowledge was knowledge of Brahman, more confidential knowledge was knowledge of Paramatma, and the most confidential knowledge is knowledge of Bhagavan, Lord Sri Krishna. ความรู้ที่เป็นความลับเนี่ยก็คือความรู้เกี่ยวกับบรรมาณว่าความจริงคือเราก็เป็นส่วนหนึ่งที่มาจากบรรมาณเหมือนกันแล้วมาเป็น
จะสรุปที่65เนี่ยกับ66เนี่ยก็เป็นส่วนที่เป็นความรู้ที่เป็นความรับมากที่สุด And uh, Lord Krishna is describing in that text number 65 th four things which a devotee should do in order to go to Krishna. And the same four things were mentioned in the final verse of chapter 9. So you can understand it's very important. Krishna spoke, spoke this verse twice. So in 65, Krishna told Arjuna to do four things. Think of him, become a devotee, worship him and offer Abasances offer homage to him. So then, because Arjuna is thinking, oh, four things, why not ju just give me one thing to do? So then Krishna says the text number 66, he said, just surrender unto me. And Krishna tells Arjuna, give up all varieties of religion. In other words, give up all kinds of religion which are based on material motivation. So surrender means just to take shelter, to take full shelter of Lord Krishna. And to take shelter of Krishna means to do what is favorable, what is pleasing to Krishna. So, from reading Bhagavad Gita, we know what kind of things Krishna likes. And we know what he doesn't like. We know what kind of things that he's, he's not pleased with. So that's why in Krishna consciousness we have four principles because they're pleasing to Krishna. Krishna is not a meat eater. And he, he doesn't drink tea or coffee or alcohol. And Krishna is very fond of cows and brahmanas. So, we, we can understand how to please Krishna. So that is, that's what it means to surrender to Krishna, to act for Krishna's pleasure. And Krishna says, I will free you from all sinful reactions. Arjuna may be worried he may get sinful reactions for doing something, but Krishna says, no, if you surrender to me, I will protect you. So surrender means to understand that Krishna is going to protect us. 
การศิลปะนั้นหมายความว่าเรามีความรู้และความมั่นใจว่าคริสตานี่จะปกป้องเรา And we should know also Krishna is maintaining us and providing for us. So we shouldn't be afraid. We should just have faith in Lord Krishna. That is surrender. Okay, going ahead. Here's text number sixty-eight to seventy-one. Lord Krishna is, is being described now. The benefit we get by hearing and uh, uh, speaking and learning this message of Bhagavad Gita. First of all. For one who explains this supreme secret to the devotees, pure devotional service is guaranteed, and at the end he will come back to me. So all of you have to learn. This Bhagavad Gita, and then you have to explain it to other people. And in this way, you're sure to go back to Krishna. Krishna describes in the next verse how he's very pleased with that person. Said so there is no servant in this world more dear to me than he, nor will there ever be one more dear. So we want to be dear to Krishna. We want to have a nice, intimate connection to Krishna. We have to just speak this Bhagavad Gita and learn the Bhagavad Gita and teach it to others. And then next, Krishna says. And I declare that he who studies this sacred conversation of ours worships me by his intelligence. So this conversation of Krishna is not. Any ordinary conversation. This is described as a sacred conversation. Just like sometimes people will meet in the marketplace and they'll talk to each other, that is called gramya kata or village talk. People will talk about each other, and they'll talk about the news, and they say, "Did you hear about this? Did you know that?" But this conversation between Krishna and Arjuna, this is called. Krishna Kata. There are two kinds of Krishna Kata. One is where Krishna is speaking, like here in Bhagavad Gita, and the other Krishna Kata is spoken about Krishna, just like in Srimad Bhagavatam. So 
So this Bhagavad Gita, this is the beginning of spiritual knowledge and then it goes on in the Srimad Bhagavatam. As we heard in the, just now in, in, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna told Arjuna to surrender to him. So that's, that's like the end of the Bhagavad Gita, we surrender to Krishna. But we want to go on from there. What do we do once we surrender? And that, we, that information we get in Srimad Bhagavatam. So Bhagavad Gita, 18 chapters, 700 slokas. But Srimad Bhagavatam is much bigger. It's 12 cantos and it's 18,000 slokas. And each canto has many chapters. So those of you who are serious, you will, after studying Bhagavad Gita, you will want to go on to study Srimad Bhagavatam. All right. So then text 71 describes, And one who listens with faith and without envy becomes free from sinful reactions and attains to the auspicious planets where the pious dwell. So Lord Krishna is describing the power of simply hearing this conversation. That it gets, gets us free from sinful reactions. And we can go to the higher planets. We can go to the heavenly planets. That's just simply for one who hears. So this is the power of spiritual sound vibration. Okay, text number 72. O Sanaprita, O conqueror of wealth, have you heard this with an attentive mind, and are your ignorance and illusion now dispelled? O O so Lord Krishna is asking Arjuna if he's heard it. He, Ar Krishna is actually saying, if there's anything you don't understand, tell me and I will repeat it. And Lord Krishna is even telling Arjuna, I will tell you the whole Bhagavad Gita again if you want. Of course, Arjuna is a very intelligent person. He can quickly understand Krishna's teaching of Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna 
we have to hear the Bhagavad Gita many times before we can begin to understand it. Then going to text number 73. Arjuna Uvacha Nasto Moha Smriti Labda Twat Prasadan Maya Chuta Stito Smi Gata Sandeha Karishye Vachanam Tava Arjuna said, My dear Krishna, O infallible one, my illusion is now gone. I have regained my memory by your mercy. I am now firm and free from doubt and I'm prepared to act according to your instructions. So we should understand Lord Krishna is giving Arjuna the choice. He's not forcing Arjuna to do what he says. He's telling Arjuna, you decide what do you want to do. Yeah, there's a verse. It's earlier on, it's a few verses back, but Krishna does say to Arjuna, What do you want to do, Arjuna? So Arjuna replies in this verse, Karishe vachanam tava, I'm going to act according to what you've told me, according to your instructions. Hmm. Arjuna said, my illusion is gone, I've got my memory back by your mercy. So we need also to get our memory back, to remember we're spirit souls, we're servants of Krishna, we need to get Krishna's mercy. We need to act according to Krishna's instructions. That will bring us success. If we follow Krishna's instructions, then we will be, we will be sure to be safe and successful. So now, the final verse of Bhagavad Gita, text number 78, spoken by Sanjay. Remember in the very beginning, we heard Dhritarashtra, the blind king. So there he is in the picture, and there's Sanjay seated on the floor, and Sanjay has been speaking the Bhagavad Gita to him. So Sanjay said, Sanjay Vacha Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna Yatra Parto Danurdara Tatra Shri Vijayo Bhutir Dhruvanitir Matirmana. Wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mystics, and wherever there is Arjuna, the supreme archer, there will also certainly be opulence, victory, extraordinary power, and morality. That is my opinion. 
กสุดท้ายนะคะสัญญาการตรัสว่าที่ใดที่มีกฤษณาปรมาจารย์แห่งระบบโยคะทั้งหลายและที่ใดที่มีออจุนะนักยิงธนูผู้ยอดเยี่ยมแน่นอนว่าที่นั่นจะมีความมั่นคงชัยชนะพลังอำนาจพิเศษพร้อมทั้งศีลธรรมนั่นคือความเห็นของข้า So Dhritarashtra was hoping that there was going to be victory for his sons, but Sanjay tells him, "No, it's not going to happen." Sanjay says. Krishna is the master of all mystics. He's Yogeshwara, and Arjuna is d a n u r d a r a He's expert in firing arrows. Ah, Krishna. Ah, Tang Kapoor Krishna. He's a Paramatma. 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 There cannot be victory for Dhritarashtra's sons. Because where, wherever there's Krishna and Arjun, there will be victory. There will be extraordinary power. There will be opulence and morality. แล้วก็ที่ไหนเพราะว่าที่ไหนก็แล้วแต่ที่มีกฤษณะแล้วก็อรจุนะเนี่ยที่นั่นเนี่ยจะมีความมั่งคั่งมีชัยชนะมีพลังอำนาจพิเศษแล้วก็มีศีลธรรม Dhritarashtra sons didn't have any of these qualities ลูกของ Dhritarashtra เนี่ยไม่มีคุณสมบัติเหล่านี้ They were not moral they were immoral พวกเขาเนี่ยไม่ได้เป็นอมตะแต่พวกเขาเนี่ยเป็นแม่มาThey insulted Drupadi. They tried to ruin the chastity of Drupadi, so that was immoral. And they are great fighters. Some of the sons of Dhritarashtra are very powerful, great fighters. But they cannot equal Lord Krishna. And Arjuna was the best student of Dronacharya. He so he was superior to them. And the sons of Dhritarashtra had some opulence, but Lord Krishna is the husband of the goddess of fortune, so he has all opulence at his disposal. So in this way, Sanjay is telling Dhritarashtra, "Your sons are not going to win. No way, they're not going to win the battle." All right, we're just going to finish here now with a little quote about the chanting of the holy name. The importance of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, is very strongly stressed in the second canto, first chapter, verse eleven of Srimad Bhagavatam, in the following way. ความสำคัญของการสวดภาวนาฮาริคริสนาฮาริคริสนาคริสนาคริสนาฮาริฮาริฮาริรามาฮาริรามารามารามาฮาริฮาริได้เน้นเป็นอย่างมากในภาคที่สองบทแรกสโลกที่สิบเอ็ดของหนังสือที่ชื่อว่
Sukadeva Goswami tells Maharaj Parikshit, My dear king, if one is spontaneously attached to the chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, it is to be understood that he has attained the highest perfectional stage. Sukadeva Goswami dai bok kap Maharaj Parikshit ba o krasat thi rak tha keut wa bukkhon nia ได้เอ่อส่วนภาวนาพระนามอันศักดิ์สิทธิ์เอ่อของคริสต์ชาติเนี่ยมหามนุษย์บทนี้เนี่ยยังยังตั้งใจสม่ําเสมอนั่นม
บทมนต์นี้เนี่ยไม่ได้มีไว้สวดหนึ่งร้อยแปดครั้งเท่านั้นแต่ว่าให้สวดมากเท่าที่จะสวดได้ But 108 beats are there on the mala because there are 108 intimate devotees of Krishna, and there's also 108 books, the Upanishads. 108 Upanishads are there. <laughs> Mm. So uh, the Maha Mantra is uh, it's a Vedic mantra. It's not just something which made up, but it's actually there in the Vedas. And it's recommended. To chant the holy name of the Lord, so you can chant any name of the Lord, but you know Lord Chaitanya, he taught the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. He taught that this is uh, the most, the, this is the nicest way to remember Krishna through chanting his holy name. <laughs> บทมนต์นี้เนี่ยคือมีไว้มันจะมันเป็นบทมนต์ที่ดีที่สุดในการสวดสำหรับโดยเฉพาะในยุคนี้ You have to understand. You have to understand when we chant, it's a prayer. That it's a prayer to Krishna. We're praying to Krishna. O Supreme Lord Krishna. O Supreme Energy of the Lord Hari. Please engage me in your service. แต่เวลาเราสวดมนต์เนี่ยก็เป็นตอนที่เราเนี่ยขอขอพระองค์ว่าบอกว่าโอ้พระองค์เจ้าฮารีได้โปรดให้ข้าพเจ้าเนี่ยได้มีโอกาสในการรับใช้พระองค์ด้วยเถิด So we're praying to Krishna and at the same time by chanting it's the answer to our prayer because by chanting we're serving Krishna แล้วก็การสวดภาวนาเนี่ยก็คือเป็นการรับใช้คริชนาด้วย Lord Krishna has said that he is not in Vaikuntha, he's not in the spiritual world in Vaikuntha, and he's not in the hearts of the yogis who meditate on him, but he is wherever his devotees are chanting his holy name. So we're attracting, we attract the attention of Lord Krishna. We give pleasure to Krishna when we chant His name. Krishna is His name, and Hare represents Krishna's. Spiritual energy. And Rama, Rama is also another name for Krishna. But Rama can also mean Krishna's brother Balarama, and it can also mean Lord Ramachandra. Who is an incarnation of Krishna? But understand that when we chant Rama, it can also mean we're calling to Krishna, who is the source of all pleasure for everyone. Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure. So Rama means one who gives pleasure. To everyone. Okay, does that help you, Chaya? Okay, my happy Chaya. Oh, yes, uh, yeah, 
ความหมายคือทำไมเราต้องสวดถึงสิบหกคำนี้โอเคค่ะขอบคุณค่ะ and uh, her little confusion is why it have to be sixteen sixteen words why it has to be sixteen words well it's a mantra and the, the, when it's put into that combination it produces a particular sound vibration which is very nice for us to chant just like if it was not 16 words we wouldn't be able to have the same kirtan it wouldn't be the, quite the same <laughs> Man means the mind and tra means to control. So the, the, the effect of the sound vibration is to control the mind. And so if you change anything, if you were to make some, it wouldn't have the same effect. It just won't be. It won't be a mantra anymore. Okay. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. It's very wonderful answer for my content in the future. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, Vaishnavi has a question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. I am Balaji Sankar. My doubt is regarding the uh, Manmana, the two important verses, uh, 8.65 and 66. Uh, Krishna is saying you should offer obeisances to me. Like, is there any count uh, how we should offer obeisances in a, in a day? Uh, and my second question is, you said we have to abandon all materially motivated religions. Um, can you explain a little bit about this to Maharaj? Sir? Is all religion materially motivated or how, how to understand this? Archana? So, uh, offering obeisances, you can offer obeisances as much as you like. There's no limit. You know, you can. You know, some people, just like some people, do Dandabhat Parikrams right round Govardhan Hill. And they offer obeisances the whole way around Govardhan Hill. So you can do that. It's up to you how much you offer obeisances. But at least one time in the day you should offer obeisances. You come before your deity, before your altar, and, or before your spiritual teacher's picture, and you bow down and you offer respects. Like that. And as far as uh, material religion, Krishna says, give up all religion. Remember, one of Krishna's reasons in coming to this world, his mission was to establish religion, to establish dharma. But he's telling Arjuna, give up all dharma. So what, what dharma does Krishna want Arjuna to give up? He wants Arjuna to give up those dharmas which are based on material desires for his material benefit. <laughs> Krishna, 
ต่พอมาถึงส่วนสุดท้ายของภาวะกิตาเนี่ยกฤษณาทรงบอกว่ายกเลิกศาสนาทั้งหลายนั่นแล้วนั่นหมายความว่าอย่างไรนะคะก็หมายความว่าศาสนาทั้งหลายที่พูดถึงอยู่เนี่ยก็เป็นศาสนาที่มีความเชื่อมสัมพันธ์กับร่างกายนี้นั่นเองให้ให้ยกเลิกศาสนาประเภทนั้นไป Arjuna is his very dear devotee he doesn't want Arjuna to be a materialistic devotee Materialistic devotees, they may worship, but they have desires. They want to get something from Krishna. They want something. They want. It's like a business. They're offering worship, but they want something in return. So you see, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, the very second verse, number two verse in the Bhagavatam, uh, Vyasa Deva has written that we should, uh, we should, uh, this Bhagavatam completely rejects all religion. All cheating religion, because material religion is actually cheating. It's called kaitava dharma. Ah, in the book two, from the Bhagavad Gita, we can see that the Lord will tell us 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 that the Lord So material religion, it means you're offering God worship to the Lord. You know, you like it's it's like you go before the deity and you say to Krishna, "I love you, I love you," but all in your heart you're thinking, "Give me money." So that's not pure love. You're talking like that. On one side, you're saying I love you, but at the same time, you're thinking, give me, give me. So Prabhupada taught us devotional service means to stop doing business. I mean, business. When you do business, you give the goods. You want paid for them. You want the money. But in Krishna consciousness, we just simply give service to Krishna without any expectation of anything in return. Is it clear? Vaishnavi, you can understand? Hare Krishna, sorry Guru Maharaj, I, I muted and I couldn't unmute. Uh, yeah. yeah, I could understand Guru Maharaj. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But uh, can someone surrender to Krishna out of some problems? Uh, like, uh, you solve this problem, I surrender to you. Like that, Guru Maharaj, positive. Well, well that's, yeah, that's... Uh, Mixed, it's not pure devotion. Okay. Arjuna. So in Bhagavad Gita, in the seventh chapter, Krishna describes about different kinds of people who come and surrender to him. And one of them who comes is in distress. 
พราะในพระวจิตาเราก็ได้อ่านไปแล้วว่าจะมีบุคคลอยู่10ประเภทที่จะมาศิโลราชต่อพระองค์และหนึ่งในบุคคลใน10ประเภทนี้ก็คือบุคคลที่อยู่ในความเครียด And somebody else comes, they're in search of wealth. They, they have economic problem. Somebody else is curious. And some people come in search of knowledge. So the people who come in distress are the most common. Yeah, they come. They have they have many problems. They come to Krishna, and okay, it's good they come to Krishna, but it's not pure devotion. Okay, They have to go on from that point, and they have to cultivate knowledge, come to the platform of knowledge. They have to purify their consciousness. We see the example about Gajendra, the elephant. He was in great distress. He got attacked by the crocodile. The crocodile had his leg, wouldn't let go of his leg. And so he was nearly de defeated by the crocodile. But the Lord came, Gajendra offered prayers, and the Lord came and saved Gajendra from the crocodile. But Gajendra became a devotee when he saw the Lord. When the Lord came, he became, his devotion awakened. He became very not pure devotee. And he regretted. He said, "The Lord." He said to the Lord, "You should have. You should have killed me. You killed the crocodile." He said, "Now I'm still left in this elephant body, in this dumb body of an elephant." He said, "I wish you had have killed me." So people who come to Krishna in distress or in search of wealth, they are called karma mishra bhaktas. They're not. Their their devotion is mixed with material desires. But they're, pi they're pious people, they're pious is because they've come to Krishna, so that's good. So we encourage them, come to Krishna and gradually become pure, get rid of these material desires and become pure. Let them hear more about Krishna. Many people come to Krishna because of prasadam. They like prasadam. But they become nice devotees because they get attached to Krishna. They they come for prasadam in the beginning, but gradually they hear the philosophy and they become good devotees. 
ออนไลน์เนี่ยเขาก็มีความชอบประสาทแล้วเขาก็มาก่อนแล้วก็ตอนหลังก็กลายเป็นเสาที่ดีเพราะเขาก็เริ่มฟังเกี่ยวกับปริชาไปเรื่อยๆโอเค any other questions here yes กูมา three more three four more โอเคโฮสต์ who come first I don't know okay you name Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances of Guru Sushila Prabhupada. We have to associate with the materialists every day, and that uh, pollutes us very much. How can we be cleansed? Thank you. Mataji said that we have to associate with the materialists every day, and that pollutes us very much. How can we be cleansed? Thank you. Mataji said that ซึ่งตรงนั้นเนี่ยมันก็จะส่งผลกระทบให้กับเราตรงนี้เนี่ยเราจะทำให้ตัวเองเนี่ยบริสุทธิ์ขึ้นได้อย่างไร You have to do good sadhana morning program You have to wake up early in the morning worship Krishna read the books and chant and then that will protect you through the day just like the doctor has to fight sick go out and meet people with disease COVID every day they have to make sure they don't get infected they have to take precaution So you have to take precaution. You don't get affected by all the materialistic people. Thing that we have to do is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that we are protected from the disease. Is to make sure that โควิดเนี่ยเราสามารถเห็นได้เขาจะใส่กอกป้องกันหลายอย่างมาเพื่อไม่ให้ตัวเองเนี่ยติดโรคนะเพราะฉะนั้นในลักษณะเดียวกันสาวก็ควรที่จะใส่กอกป้องกันตัวเองโดยการทำสาธารณะดีๆโอเค next question Arjuna yes good uh host I don't know who come first okay มาดูสิ Hare Krishna Guruji um I have a question um it's listening to you um Gita every day is like a, a reading ten times Gita. It's very clear and uh, simply explained. Uh, my question is: uh, Five thousand years ago, Sri Krishna uh, taught Gita, and five hundred years ago, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, preaches Maha Mantra. But uh, you mentioned in Bhagavatam, uh, first chapter, uh, Hare Krishna Mantra. It's mentioned. So that means even in the olden days, uh, people chant um, uh, Hare Krishna mantra. And uh, when it was uh, written, Bahavatam. คำถามของมาจีนะคะก็ถามว่าพระวิทิตาเนี่ยคริสนาตรัสเมื่อห้าพันปีที่แล้วแล้วก็เมื่อห้าร้อยปีที่แล้วเนี่ยพระองค์เจ้าเจตัญญาก็ทรงเอามหามุนเนี่ยมาให้แต่อยากจะถามเพิ่มเติมในส่วนของสิมาบอกว่าตามว่านี้เนี่ยถูกเขียนขึ้นเมื่อไหร่แล้วก็ในนั้นเนี่ยมีมหามุนอยู่ด้วยไหมอยู่ด้วยได้ยังไง The Bhagavatam was written by Srila Vyasadeva five thousand years ago. He wrote it after he wrote the Mahabharat. After he got instruction from Narada Muni, his guru, then he wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. Ah, uh, is Srimad Bhagavatam. He wrote it by Vyasadeva. Ah, after he wrote the Mahabharat, he wrote it. 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 After he wrote the Hare Krishna mantra was also chanted by Lord Brahma in the beginning of the creation. Lord Brahma is the first person. He also chanted, chants the Hare Krishna mantra. And we said it's in the Vedas. The Vedic knowledge was imparted in the heart of Brahma. So it came from the Vedas, and the Vedas come from Brahma, and Brahma is also chanting Hare Krishna. Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Next question. Hare Krishna. Um, Bhakta, okay. yes. 
Yes, Bhakta Pirangelo from Geneva. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. You have a question? I have a question. Yes, Prabhupada. Go ahead, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj. You hear me? Yes, go ahead. Quick. Okay. So, my name is Piranjan. I'm from Genève. Thank you very much for your Bhagavad Gita lessons. Fantastic. And I'm a little bit disappointed because at 12 I was eating with my daughter. And she said, no, I don't want to eat this vegetarian food. And uh, you always offer it to uh, Damodar. And, and I want to eat normal food. But, but what, what do you mean normal food? I want to eat meat. Like all... She's seven years old, you know, she goes to school and the other children, they eat meat and she wants to eat meat. So I think, my God, what, what, what can I do? <laughs> I'm just uh, I, to share this because I need some help. I need some suggestions, some, some guidelines. I don't know, I'm upset about this situation. Maranja. พระองค์ดีนะคะก็บอกว่าตัวเองเนี่ยมีลูกสาวอายุประมาณ 7 so you have to teach her about where does meat come from and you have to ask her, does she not like animals? Does she like animals or not? Most children like animals. Does she realize that to eat meat they have to kill animals? Would she like to kill the animals and then cook? Does she know what she's eating? People don't know what they're eating. So you have to just appeal to her. Is it nice to be cruel to animals? Or should we be kind to animals? If your daughter had been brought up throughout her childhood, her birth, from her birth, from the beginning of her birth, if she'd been brought up to be vegetarian and if everybody in the home was vegetarian, then this problem would not come. No, no. She, she never... At meat, you know, she's vegetarian since the birth. Really? Mother vegetarian, me vegetarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her mom's a vegetarian. No. Just when she goes to school, the other children are... Yes, yes, oh. exactly, no. exactly. The association with other children, you know, they... Uh-huh. Yeah, she, she wants to be part of, you know, because she feels like she's a little bit... Uh, feels like she's different um, from the others. Yeah, she's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You should tell her she's very lucky. You have mm -hmm. to... And she should understand how lucky she is. And you should appeal to her that she should talk to her friends about how cruel it is to kill the animals just so that they can eat them. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't like the situation. I don't like it. You know, yeah, difficult. Like because I've done everything, you know, nicely. I, we offer to Damodar. We, uh, she's always been vegetarian. Everything is... You know, everything is uh, supposed to be like Unta, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. But yes. th this is the challenge you face. Yeah. You la let her go and see the killing of animals. And tell her, do you, really? what she, does she like it? You, get, you can get movies of these things as well. How they kill the animal, how they slaughter, and this is what people are eating. Yeah, she's seven years, she's quite big. I, I may show her that, yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, one more question. Yes, you're right. From Sarah Pune Mamadi. My question is, oh, uh, 
ะสรุปที่หกสิบหกคริสนาบอกว่ายกเลิกศาสนาทุกประการแล้วก็ให้ศีลราชพระองค์ใช่ไหมคะตรงนั้นอ่ะคริสนาบอกว่าศาสนาทุกประการที่เราปฏิบัติพิธีการศาสนาใช่ไหมคะที่ให้ยกเลิกอ่ะแล้วปัจจุบันเราก็ยังเห็นได้อยู่ว่าพวกเรายังปฏิบัติกันอยู่อย่างเช่นศาสนาตอนอตอนตั้งชื่อศาสนาเวลาปลายอะไรพิธีกรรมศาสนาเราเนี้ยเราก็ยังปฏิบัติกันอยู่อยากจะอยากให้ครูมาราชอธิบายนิดหนึ่งค่ะกิชนาบอกให้เรายกเลิกศาสนาทุกประการที่ว่าเนี่ยศาสนาแบบไหนวิธีการทางศาสนา Uh, her question is uh, according to the uh, 18th chapter sloka 66 that Krishna asked us to give up all the religion. So that so her question is even now we become a devotee and all, but we still perform such as the uh, given name ceremony and when uh, people pass away the funeral ceremony. So. When he tell us to give up all the religion, all all the religion, that means uh, all this kind of thing also, or uh, what what is no the, like the, these ceremonies are connected to Krishna consciousness, just like when you do the name giving ceremony or the grain giving. So at that time uh -huh. we're chanting Hare Krishna, and we use Vaishnava mantras. สิ่งนะคะพิธีกรรมตั้งชื่อหรือพิธีกรรมที่มาตจีกล่าวมาเมื่อกี้นี้นะคะไม่ถือว่าเป็นพิธีกรรมทางศาสนาที่เป็นวัตถุเพราะว่าเราเนี่ยเวลาเราทํากิจกรรมเหล่านี้เนี่ยเราก็จะมีการมีการสวดภาวนาฮาริกฤษณะเข้าไปในพิธีเหล่านั้นด้วยซึ่งตรงนี้เนี่ยบ่งบอกถึงความเป็นทิพย์ Yeah all the prayers all the mantras are in relation to Krishna บทบทมนตราทั้งหมดนี้นะคะมีความเชื่อมสัมพันธ์กับพระชัย So everything is Krishna conscious. You don't have to worry. Okay. So we will finish here. So I have to thank all the devotees very much again. Very nice. Oh, Nan is also here today. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Guru Dev, that is one message from Kano Priya Mataji to you. Oh. Yes, she said. She, she said thank you very much for uh, this seminar that you have been given. And so many times she have question, and every time you are you always answer her question without her asking you. Oh, so wonderful! So really very thankful <laughs> for that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very nice. So thank her very much. Very and happy. And there is also one question from uh, Tulsi Mataji. She wanted to ask. Like in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna asked uh, Arjuna that, okay, in four things that Arjuna cannot do, and he asked him to do one thing. So she is also asking, like, uh, what one thing she should do in uh, Krishna consciousness? Surrender. Okay. The same as Arjuna. She should surrender. Yes? And chant, surrender begins when, when you start chanting every day. Every day you have to chant. And don't eat bad food, just eat vegetarian. Okay, so thank you very much. And we'll see you on Wednesday. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.